Hello and welcome. So today, guys, I have such a special video for you. I've been so excited to prepare and to film this video. So you guys, for those of you who have been with me for a while, you may recall when I first decided to really go deep into my Middle Eastern fragrances journey. I had shared with you that I only had a couple of fragrances that I had picked up while on trips to the Middle East and that were more like luxury fragrances. And then we went on this journey and we've discovered so many beautiful fragrances, so many gems. And now I want to invite you to join me into expanding our journey into what's considered to be luxury Middle Eastern fragrances. So today I have for you five fragrances and these five fragrances are considered to be Middle Eastern luxury fragrances. I'm gonna go ahead and unbox them because I haven't even sprayed them like to prepare them because they're luxury fragrances. I'm not thinking that they're going to need maceration time, but I guess we'll learn about that in this journey. So as I was saying, I'm going to go ahead and unbox them. I'm gonna show you the boxes, and then I'm going to try them for the first time with you. And I'll give you my thoughts as usual. Anyway, but before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I'm Arahi, and in this channel, we love to talk about fragrances because we love to smell fabulous at all times. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, and sometimes like today, you even get an extra video for the week. If that sounds like the type of content that you're interested in and like a good plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. So the first fragrance that I have for you is from a fragrance house that is out of Kuwait. And this fragrance house is called Gissa. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And this first fragrance that I'm gonna share with you as I have several from this house, this one is called La Luna Valley. So La Luna Valley is part of their signature collection and it comes in this box, guys, but this is not cardboard. I don't think this is wood. I don't know what material this is, but look how beautiful. I opened it so that you can really see the design. And of course, it's not a sticker. It's definitely like textured and very, very beautiful. And here is the box. And then of course you open it and I thought that you would lift it, but no, it opens like this. And there is the beautiful fragrance. Oh my goodness. I hope the camera is picking up all the detail. It's just such a beautiful bottle. And then on this side, it has like a card that it comes with and it's like inserted in like a little pocket that the little door has. And of course, nothing in this bottle is like a sticker. It is so weighty, very, very heavy. It feels extremely luxurious. So I'm sure you can tell this is not 100 ml. By the time I picked it up, I was able to get the 200 ml because I think there's like a travel size that maybe is like a 50 ml. And then there's also the 100 ml or 90 ml, I'm sorry. And then there's a 200 ml. So the other thing that I wanted to share with you is that for today's fragrances, I'm not going to spray them on paper I'm going to go ahead and spray them on skin and in prep for this video I scrubbed my arms and my hands so that we can have enough real estate to spray these fragrances on skin and I can give you a really good assessment all right so let me go ahead and give you the notes of this fragrance so we can go ahead and spray it so at the top we have incense, raspberry, and apricot. In the middle, we have cotton candy, sandalwood, and oud. And at the base, we have patchouli, tonka, and amber woods. Oh my goodness, did you hear that? There's fruitiness to it, and then there's some cotton candy. This is going to be really interesting. Let's go ahead and spray it. And look at the sprayer. Ooh, wow, did you guys see that? Oh, wow. That sprayer was really something. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, guys. This is beautiful. Ah. Oh. 
So the opening is definitely a bit fruity, but it's not very fruity. This fragrance is definitely sweet, but just a tad sweet. It's not about the sweetness or the fruitiness either. I can tell that we're transitioning to something else already. I am picking up on the incense. It gives the fragrance like a little bit of smokiness without being too much. Oh my goodness, guys. And I am picking up on the most beautiful oud because the oud is not necessarily sweet. I don't think that the sweetness is coming from the oud. But the oud is so silky smooth. It's just beautiful. It's almost like you get to enjoy the smell of a beautiful oud without being concerned that it's going to be too intense any minute. Ah, oh, this fragrance is also very aromatic. And I'm also picking up on patchouli now. The patchouli is not the center of attention here. It's, the patchouli is not the star. I'm trying to figure out who is the star. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. So I'm picking up on that cotton candy note. I just, you know what? So the reason that I selected this fragrance is not because it was one of the most recent launches, but because of the notes. When I saw cotton candy, I was just too curious to understand how you could have a fragrance with oud and cotton candy. I mean, wouldn't the oud like, oh my goodness, wouldn't the oud like overpower the cotton candy? But I guess that's not the case because, oh, okay, so now I am definitely getting like a fruitiness with the cotton candy and the sweetness, guys, that I told you, I didn't think that the sweetness was necessarily coming from the fruits. It's coming from the cotton candy because I'm clearly picking up on the cotton candy and then there's a fruitiness in the background and then there's that oud. The oud is like the backdrop to everything here, but the oud is so smooth. You know, in the oud meter, I would say that this is like a three, maybe a two and a half, three out of five. There's also like an earthiness to the fragrance that makes it really interesting. And I know that that earthiness is coming from the patchouli without a doubt. Oh. Oh my goodness, guys, this fragrance is just exquisite. I have never sniffed anything like this. Wow, I am so impressed right now. I can't even, wow. Because do you know how hard it is to get that cotton candy note to really translate in the olfactory journey? Wow. So I am picking up on the apricot, the cotton candy. I'm getting some sandalwood, I'm getting the patchouli. I'm getting the vanilla and definitely the oud is in this journey from beginning to end. So now guys, I'm at the dry down and look, I mean, I just have to show you my hand so that you can understand the level of concentration of these fragrances. Look at my hand. Do you see how shiny it is? And it's really not wet guys. It's I'm at the dry down. Okay. So now I am picking up on some fruitiness with that very, very delicate note of cotton candy because now the cotton candy note has transitioned into a very, not faint or weak, but like a delicately smooth type of cotton candy note that is supplementing all the fruits. The fruit that I'm picking up on the most is the apricot for sure. I have the cotton candy. Oh my goodness. I have the oud in the backdrop for sure. I have some sandalwood and the patchouli and the patchouli now is definitely giving the fragrance like a like an earthy quality that just grounds the fragrance and makes it kind of mysterious and interesting. But this is not a dark fragrance. This is just really, really beautiful. I think that this is a fragrance that you could definitely use during the spring and during summer days where it's not too hot. This is not one that I would pull if it's anything above 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But this fragrance, oh my goodness, and I can't wait for the beginning of the fall. I'm probably going to rock this all throughout the rest of the spring because I also have the feeling that layering with this fragrance must be a delight but more to come on that guys because of course i will circle back with detailed reviews but i am telling you oh my goodness the performance on this one i know it's not going to be a problem i mean guys look 
I have to, I, I really hope that the camera is capturing because do you see the level of, of oil concentration? So the next oil. fragrance that I want to share with you is also from Gissa and it comes in a set of two and it's called Legend of Valleys. And I just noticed the production date in the back of the box and it is 110 of 2023. So I think we are good with this fragrance. I don't think it's gonna need any maceration time. And like I said earlier, I mean, at this level, I wouldn't think that you would need to macerate a fragrance, but we're gonna learn about that in this journey. So here's how you open it. And there are the fragrances. And the two fragrances are Hudson 2 and Imperial 2. So let's go ahead and start with Hudson 2 because that's the one that made me just order the set because I am loving the notes. I just have a feeling that we're absolutely going to love this one. And here is the bottle. And so you know, these bottles are 90 ml. So the set will bring two 90 ml bottles. So anyway, this one is Hudson too. And let me go ahead and share the notes before we spray it. So the top we have rose and fruits. In the middle we have white flowers and saffron. And at the base we have amber, musk, and tonka. Oh wow, I can't wait to spray this one. All right, so let's go ahead and spray it. And for this one, I am going to spray it in the upper part of my arm since I still, I mean, guys, look at the oil concentration of that fragrance of from La Luna, remember? Look at that. And it is in complete dry down without a doubt. Okay, let's go ahead and spray this one. So here we go. Ooh, that's, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, my, my, my. I am loving this one. Oh, oh my goodness. This is so, so good. Okay, so this fragrance is quite ambery. And it opens, it definitely opens with that rose. But the rose is very well mixed with like some fruits. And what I'm trying to figure out is what are those fruits? I can't put my finger on it. There's also like a freshness to the fragrance and I can almost assure you that there's bergamot and or lemon in this fragrance because it opens quite fresh with a very young rose. And then I'm immediately now picking up on some white florals. This one is really, really beautiful. So let me tell you, this fragrance does not have necessarily what I would call a Middle Eastern presence to it. It is definitely obviously a Middle Eastern fragrance, but I really believe that they did this one with the Western market in mind because I'm not really getting a Middle Eastern presence from it, but what I am getting is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. And I can't even say that it's more about the white florals. I can tell you that the fragrance is quite ambery and it has a beautifully done musk. And then I'm also picking up on that tonka for sure. It, it is definitely fresh, spicy, which will allow this fragrance to be used without a problem during the spring and during the summer season, any type of weather actually. I really think that this is an all year fragrance, but this is absolutely beautiful, guys. I don't know if this is unisex though. I really think that this leans a tad to the feminine side because those white florals have been done so, so smoothly. I mean, you do have saffron and you have that tonka and you definitely pick up on all of them and it is a musky fragrance, but I think it leans a tad to the feminine side. Okay, so this next one is of course the second fragrance that was in the set and this one is called Imperial 2. Let me go ahead and show you the bottle. Very beautiful, oh my goodness. And like I told you before, this is the 90 ml size. So let me go ahead and give you the notes. So at the top we have Italian bergamot and pink pepper. In the middle we have patchouli, praline, and white amber. And at the base we have oud, leather, and dark woods. Okay, so to me, this is either gonna be a straight up unisex fragrance or it's going to be a unisex leaning towards the masculine side, just based on the notes. But of course, I could be totally wrong. Let's go ahead and spray it. Okay, so I sprayed the first one here. Then I sprayed um, Hudson 2 here. So now I'm going to spray Imperial 2 here. 
Ooh. Oh my goodness. Did you guys see that sprayer? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Wow. So let me tell you, this one to me is truly a unisex fragrance. I have never found oud to be done like this. The oud is like mixed with like that Italian bergamot note. I'm picking up on like a fresh spicy opening, definitely fresh spicy. And I'm definitely getting that pink pepper to the point where like it's tickling my, my nose, but the opening is very, very fresh. I know that they said that there's Italian bergamot, but I am telling you there's something else here because this is very fresh and beautiful. It's a very bright, fresh, but fresh, spicy type of opening. So I'm now picking up on the patchouli and the oud has intensified a bit. But I am telling you that this oud, this oud is like a level two oud. Like really, I think that the oud, you could pick up on the oud more in um, Hudson 2 than you are in Imperial 2. And judging from those notes, I thought it was going to be the contrary. But I am telling you, this fragrance is unisex, but it's not leaning masculine at all. This is truly a unisex fragrance. I am getting that leather now, but the leather is so, so smooth. And the leather is pairing perfectly with that very, very silky oud. That's the word that I wanted to use, silky oud. It is that smooth. It almost feels like silk oud going through your nose. Wow, this is really, really beautiful, guys. Please let us know if you've tried Imperial 2 because, wow, I thought that this was really going to lean masculine. And because the fragrance comes in a set, I thought that maybe, you know, Hudson 2 would be the feminine one and maybe this one would be the masculine. But no, this is really a unisex fragrance. It does not lean at all towards the masculine side. And the other one, Hudson 2, to me definitely leans a tiny bit towards the feminine side. But oh my goodness, this is incredible. These two are beautiful. And you know what? I am so looking forward to like layering them because just from... From the smell that I pick up, I can tell you that layering them is going to give us an incredible combination. But of course, more to come. I'm going to move on, but I will circle back with reviews on these two. I'm not really concerned about performance because again, I, I mean, this is like 20% oils for sure. Because guys, look at that. I mean, you know how long ago I sprayed my hand and you can see it looks like it's wet, but it's not. It's oils. This is really, really cool. Anyway, moving on. So this next fragrance is from a totally different fragrance house. It's from a fragrance house by the name of Al Majed Oud Perfumes. And this fragrance is Ranan VIP Red. And it comes in this gorgeous, gorgeous box. And this area here, it's not a sticker, guys. This is like velvet. And this is like embossed font. Ooh, oh my goodness. Wow. Do you see how that opened? Look how beautiful, guys. And here is the bottle. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you what the notes are. So the notes for this one, at the top we have bergamot and tangerine. In the middle we have jasmine and lily of the valley. And at the base we have musk and vanilla. Okay, so let's go ahead and spray it. And I'm going to spray this one. Let's start with spraying it on my hand. Wow. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, this is, this is glorious. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, this is fresh, fruity, and musky. This opens very citrusy and clearly pick up on the bergamot and the tangerine in that opening. It's a very citrusy opening. It almost reminds me of Expressions 4. You know how the opening of Expressions 4, not that they're similar at all. I'm just saying that it's a similar opening because it's very heavy on the citrus notes. I'm picking up on that tangerine even more than the bergamot. Oh my goodness. And the tangerine is very like juicy and sweet. This is a sweet fragrance. Not like overbearing or obnoxiously sweet, but it is a sweet fragrance. 
So it opens very citrusy. Definitely the tangerine is the star of the fragrance right now. And I'm getting a lot of vanilla also. The vanilla is just beautiful. But I have to tell you, I don't think that I have a fragrance in my collection or a fragrance that I've ever sniffed where the tangerine is this real. I mean, guys, the tangerine is the star of the fragrance. I'm getting the tangerine. Now I'm getting it's tangerine, definitely the jasmine, a little bit of the lily of the valley, and I'm getting that vanilla. But this is gorgeous. This is, I mean, I can almost bite into this tangerine. So if you don't like tangerine, this fragrance is not for you because this is like so real. But if you're into tangerine, if you're into that citrusy, real, like very, very like photorealistic type of tangerine, fruity and juicy and sweet, oh my goodness. And the freshness of the opening does last quite a bit because it's not until the official dry down that I just feel like it dissipates, like it really went away. But the fragrance is not cloying after that because the tangerine is still present. It's not as fresh as in the opening, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Wow, this is just magnificent. <sighs> Another success. Love it. I will definitely circle back with you with performance. But again, I don't think we're going to have performance issues with this one either because I still have quite a bit of oil at the dry down. We are going to end with one that I have so been looking forward to trying. I, I have just been like, oh, it took everything to not open this one without you. But here we are. And this one is from Gessa Only, and this is One and Only. And it comes in this beautiful box. Here's the back of the box. And then this is how it opens. And there is the fragrance. Look at this, guys. Wow. And then do you see on this side? Of course, I'm going to tell you what it says there in a minute. But look at that presentation. It has it, I think, in Arabic at the top. But at the bottom, it says, Embracing your femininity and innocence, crafted to embody magnificence, so you soar among the vibrant skies so delicate. You reign as you fly, you captivate and dominate, you sparkle and radiate with your still and charm. Light dims witness to your glow. With your greatness, our universe overflows. Wow, that's pretty beautiful. I think that's pretty interesting. And here we have the bottle absolutely gorgeous oh my goodness and it has the plaque of course down there with the name like the others and look at this cap guys oh my goodness just beautiful look at the detail on that fragrance wow do you see that and of course this is a 200 ml bottle but look how gorgeous the color and it's very very heavy it feels so so luxurious I'm thinking this is totally feminine based on the color, but you never know. So let me share with you the notes of this one. So at the top, we have bergamot, passion fruit, and peach. Now, you know I had to pick it up, passion fruit. And then at the heart, we have geranium flower, caramel, and jasmine. And then at the base, we have patchouli, ambergris, and white musk. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's go ahead and try it. Oh, wow. Okay, this one is like a passion fruit bomb in the opening, but it's also very citrusy and it's definitely fresh. Oh my goodness. This is so, so beautiful. This is such a realistic passion fruit. Wow. I'm definitely getting that peach. So in the opening, I picked up on a very, very strong note of passion fruit. So you know when you have the fruit and you just scoop the inside of it and you get that sniff, oh, that incredible, like juicy, uh, sweet, kind of beautiful, sometimes a little bit tart even from the passion fruit. That's what I get in the opening. But now, oh yeah, now it is all about the peach. The passion fruit is there, but it's in the background because now it's really about the peach. Wow. 
This is incredible, guys. Oh my goodness. You have to tell me if you've gotten your nose on this one because this is gorgeous. This is just perfection. Now I can clearly tell that we have the peach with the caramel and I'm getting little hints of patchouli, but the patchouli doesn't really have a strong presence because the peach is controlling. The peach is the star here. Wow. And this is beautiful because you have the peach and then you have like a faint passion fruit and then you have that mixed with like the caramel. So the sweetness has intensified, but the peach has intensified too. This is a very, very ripe and juicy peach. Like when you bite into it and that peach is right on point. Oh yeah, this is so, so realistic, guys. I am picking up on the jasmine, but, but not much. The jasmine is really in the background, just like the patchouli, because again, the star here is the peach and that caramel. Oh, it's like the peach and the caramel with a backdrop, like with a, with a foundation or core of like musk. Yeah. Wow. This is beautiful. This is very, very different. I never expected this to be all about one fruit. And then with that beautiful caramel, because this is primarily about the peach. If you do not like how a, a natural peach smells, you're not going to like this fragrance. But if you like that ripe, juicy, sweet peach that when you bite into it, you can smell it. That's what this smells like. And then imagine if you sprinkled that like with a little bit of caramel. Oh my goodness. And then you have like a little bit of the tartness of the passion fruit coming through. Like I can clearly pick it up. It is just so, so beautiful and so different but guys this is so realistic i don't know how they did this this is a very realistic peach and then there's the jasmine the jasmine is there and the patchouli but but they're definitely in a supporting role maybe maybe even like a third role because this is really the peach the passion fruit the caramel on that musk base but this is very, very different, very, very beautiful. This is perfect for spring and summer. This is perfection actually for spring and summer. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. I am loving this one and I am loving this bottle. Oh my goodness. I am so happy with this one. Oh. All right, guys. So we've reached the end of this video and I just wanted to come today and start to share with you some luxury Middle Eastern fragrances. Please let me know if you've picked up any of these fragrances, if you had heard of them. I'm sure that you have heard about some of them, if not all. And if you have them or if you're planning to try them, please let me know your thoughts in general. I really think that all of these fragrances are exquisite. And what I'm loving the most is that they're all very different. So I really covered a lot of bases here. I mean, La Luna is just an incredible oud. I honestly, that, that oud is just, I really have to wear it more. And when I circle back with you, I'll give you more details, but I am so impressed with this oud. If that is how Gissa does oud, I'm going to be picking up so many more from their house. And then the way that they do fruit in this photo realistic way, Oh my goodness, like I saw this in uh, One and Only, which is this one, but then I also understood that maybe that's part of their DNA because in Hudson 2 and Imperial 2, I am finding very realistic notes, very, very realistic. And then when it comes to Ronan, oh my goodness, I mean, I, incredible. And as usual, thank you so much for hanging with me today and I will see you in the next video.